This Jesus. I'm going to tell you this again. Whenever, whenever a man and his children, when he feels disrespected, it makes him shut down. You find any man, any, any, you listening? Any man, I don't care what, I don't care, I don't care his what language was, don't matter to me. If you disrespect him, he's going to shut down. That's right. That's true. That's right. That's why the welfare system that tells a man this is what you better do. And if you don't do it, we're going to put you in jail. We're going to mess up your credit. We're going to take your any state issued licenses. We're going to take that from you too. Do you know why he's sitting in jail? He is despising the day he ever had you. And so now he curses the day that you were born. Don't dishonor, disrespect your father. That's right. Because there are things about him that you know nothing about. That's right. Jesus. Did you hear me? What a man. You listening? You listening? As a, a, a woman carries a, a baby for nine months, I shoot, for nine months. You listen? She carries for nine months. So, so there is this easy bonding. Huh? Oh, I was like easier bonding. But that father has to work. So in a sense, you, you, you come out of, you know, when you come out of the womb, the male is already at a disadvantage. And so there is a working. And so uh, if, you, if you have more than one, then, then you have another one, and then they say it's that middle one that's most of the time that's rejected. Uh, feels that way. And sometimes they say it's the oldest one. But it, that's really not true. It's how that child processes. Right. That's right. One, one thing, one thing could happen. That that child, really, whether it be the baby, whether it be the middle one or the oldest one, one thing could happen, one thing, and you couldn't be there. Now that thing right there is stealing their mind. You don't love me. Are you listening? He said a bastard cannot enter into the congregation. Can't come in. The reason why we are struggling with Father. Is because we don't know God. Jesus. <laughs> when you when you were given the flu shot, you listen. Mm -hmm. They're giving you the flu. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're forcing your body to make an antibody. Mm -hmm. So when this thing comes back, it knows it, right. and it's already ready. Are you listening? The word of God is like an antibody. When it comes, when the enemy comes in, as a flood, the spirit of the is standing against it. No, because I know my daddy. I know my daddy. I'm not talking about Sam. I'm talking about my daddy. And what Sam couldn't give me, my daddy, I have a father, daddy God gave me. Yes. 
So I got, listen, and so what I had to learn how to do, I had to put Sam over here. Because Sam wasn't my provider. God, y'all ain't gonna talk to me now. God was my provider. And if God moved through my mama, it was still God. So I don't, I don't have a right to divide them and say that she's better than I. Oh, y'all not gonna talk to me. Because they were both doing the best they could with what they had. Who is quiet in this place? And so watch this now. So, so he says, Bastard can't come in. That's the question. I want you to ask yourself this. Are you a bastard? Because it means that you're fatherless. And if you around here talking about I ain't got no daddy. Then you just told God that he doesn't exist in your life. I'm telling you that God, who I can't see, but I see, was more real than Sam. Come on, Sam. Jesus. Jesus. Watch this. I was on 36th Peoria gas station. I had two dollars to my name. And my daddy pulled up. You listen? Come on now. My daddy pulled up. Two dollars to my name. He's filling his truck up. We went into the place at the same time. Pay. I gave my two. He gave his thirty. And he's pulling in his car. He got back in his car, his truck. I got back in mine, and he went on about his business. Thank you, Lord. But I left the gas station and went to my uncle's house. Oh, wow. Uncle Hubert. He said, hey, I was thinking about you today. <laughs> and I want to give you that something. Yes. Gave me $50. Yes. I'm trying oh, to get up here. Go sell my daddy. Yes, what? Didn't yes. give it but father, God, yes. the father. Yes. Yes. Don't talk to me. Hit somebody. Yes. Touch somebody. Yes. Spoke to somebody and say, give my son what he needs. I want to tell her, come on in here and just know that not one second, not one moment of the day have you been fatherless. Though society has told you, oh my God, because your dad went in the same house, because you don't have his last name, that you ain't never been fathered, but I'm telling you, So he ain't rejected you. You have rejected him. This house, my absence. John Riles, he's your godfather. There's something in him. Come on. God is putting him. Just say, so I say, just for me. If it's a hug, he got it. If it's a word, he got it. Don't talk to me. He got it. If it's gas on my car, he got it. All that a father needs to be. It's come out somebody. It's in this, in this, in this, in this. See, when you got God, huh? He's not only limited to come through only Calvin Johnson, but He can come through her. He can come through. I'm talking about the Father. He can come through her. The Father can come through her. Now he gonna talk to me. The Father can come through whoever He wanna come through. He ain't limited. 
season and you walk away from it you cut God off are you listening and so now everything God does is to pull you back into position we've wasted too much time I had Tremaine's car sweet and so brake light was on. So I called mama and said, Mama, I need to change the brakes. And Maine called me. She said, well, how much did it cost? And I told her. She said, well, I'll give it back. I'll pay, I'll pay you back. And I'm saying, I'm your daddy. You ain't got to pay me back. Because I'm doing what a father does. <laughs>
I had to pay $2,200 to have this surgery, a series of surgeries on my face. You listening? Nobody had it. My daddy came to my room with a cashier's check. Oh, y'all don't get this. I said, God, the Father, touched the God of the natural and said, provide, provide. That's why you should always honor your father. Because you came out of his loins, baby. And without father, you would not exist. Right now, and whether you know your father or not, whether he was no, whether he was a wretch undone, you are right now at this second begin to praise God. Now some of y'all right now are stuck. But my daddy ain't dead number one. Baby, you missing a point. In order for you to honor God, you got to honor daddy. You need to open up your mouth. Look at me, but it ain't gonna help you right here. You wanna say, I don't care what he did. $10. That's all he 
You gotta let him go. You gotta let him off the hook. I'm trying to help you because this is messing with your relationship with Abba, Father, Daddy God. You got to hear me. The reason why our lives are so twisted and jacked up is started with Daddy. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. And some of you right now, you, if your father is gone, you still should celebrate him. God is speaking so clearly in this room today. And I wanted my daddy the way that I wanted him. You listening? One day he brought me a big freezer, big old huge humongous freezer. I call it a body freezer. You can put bodies in there. <clears throat> and I said, how come you don't tell me you love me? He said, I got you that freezer. <laughs> he said, when I brought it, it wasn't empty. It's corn in there. It's fishing up. A purple hull peas. He said, do you want to say it or do you want to do it? I had to interpret his love on how he loved. There are people, there are mothers, there are fathers that God will send you. You listen? that will love you the way that you need to be loved. It's called God, Father, God, Mother. But if you're a natural parent, excuse me, are lacking in that area, you gotta let that go. If you do not, you will not appreciate what's standing before you. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. I want everybody standing. Put your hands up. Chantel, don't worry about it. We know what you're trying. Wherever your father is, if you've never seen him before in your life, if you don't understand him, if you know him through and through, your spirit. I want you to begin to honor him. And I promise you're going you're gonna to begin to feel the presence of God. Because it is something that God is trying to get to you. It is difficult for a man to take care of you. And he's not in the same house. The enemy has come years ago to break your heart to keep you from receiving God or knowing him as a father or trusting him as your father this is the day that God said I'm coming for my babies come open up your mouth and begin to tell God begin to honor God you got to open up your mouth here. And some of y'all are going to experience pain. Some of you are going to experience rejection. But you're going to feel the presence of Alma Father.
there's a reason why there's tears in your eyes. Because this has been a hurt place. It's been a place of disappointment. And so today God comes. And he said, I want to give you a DNA change. I want to do a new thing in you. 